Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, dear colleagues, it is a great pleasure and honor to be here in such wonderful surroundings at the Senate House and to be able to welcome you to the 44th LIBE annual conference. My name is Kristina Hormia Potanen. I come from the Finnish National Library and I am the president of LIBE. This year's conference is of, of particular importance to our members because we will deal with the themes related to open science and how we as an organization uh, can face the future towards open science. For the past 20, 20 years, we have dealt with digitalization of information uh, and our environment within our profession. Today, our challenges are bigger than ever. Open science has taken a more and more central role in our development of science and societies. Open science is enabled and promoted by directing special attention on three central elements, uh, completing each other. Open access to publications, open research data, and uh, open research methods. Also, cutting-edge research environments at once skills and knowledge belong to this concept. Open science is about sharing scientific data on a truly massive scale. When data volumes rise so high, the nature of science changes. Problems that were previously not even recognized suddenly become tractable. Researchers who never met uh, at different institutions and in divergent fields find themselves working on related topics. The vital catalyst for all this is the ability to share and reuse the data in huge volumes over vast distances across disciplines and institutions. Steering the development requires capabilities in the management of change. It also demands real and concerted actions to collaborate at institutional, national and international levels. Collaboration in the exchange of knowledge, training and joint ventures in the building of infrastructures and tools to support open science are crucial. It is important that the key stakeholders responsible for the open science development at different levels cooperate. Our role in the development of science and research is critical to the success of the future of libraries. Libraries operate at an institutional, national and international level. LIBE provides an excellent environment for European level collaboration, sharing best practices, networking and learning from each other. It is important to identify the implications of open science and to be able to communicate them and raise awareness. <coughs> For, for the awareness of the possibilities for research and humankind, but it, it is also a chance to know the barriers to be able to overcome them. During the past two or three years, LIBE has had special emphasis in overcoming the legal barriers, especially related to copyright and text and data mining. As an example of this, the Hague Declaration, which aims to foster agreement on how to best enable access to facts, data and ideas. <coughs> By removing barriers to accessing and analyze, analyzing the wealth of data produced by society, we can find answers to great challenges such as climate change and depleting natural resources. At the moment, uh, close to 400 <coughs> organizations and many more individuals uh, have signed the declaration. The signatories are universities, research funding organizations, and library associations all over the world, and of course researchers. During this week in, in London, uh, LIBE members have the possibility to attend workshops and increase our collective knowledge of the different aspects of open science. The conference program is impressive with well-known world-class speakers. Finally, I would like to thank you all for attending the 
Libe 44 annual conference. I wish you all inspiring days and fruitful discussions during these conference days. Now it is my great pleasure to welcome Sir Adrian Smith to the podium. He is the Vice Chancellor of the University of, of London. The Federal University of London is the biggest university in the United Kingdom. Uh, it is really a ple great pleasure to have you here. Please, Sir. The Thank you, and as Vice-Chancellor of University of London, a very warm welcome uh, from me to this wonderful Senate House, the headquarters of the University. Uh, the building dates back to the 1930s, completed just before the outbreak of the Second World War. Um, these days, it's a vibrant academic <coughs> hub, uh, for the University, but um, others have eyed it up for different purposes. Um, the folklore has it that had Hitler succeeded in invading the UK, this was going to be his headquarters. <laughs> in the war, taken over two years after it was built, it became the Ministry of Information. And that turned in George Orwell's 1984 into the Ministry of Truth. So we have a rather checkered history uh, in this building. But we don't just do solemn events like this one. Uh, if you watch Batman movies, hands up all those who've seen a Batman movie, <laughs> the skyline of Gotham City has a huge tower, and often the shadowy Batman is on top of the tower. That tower is the Senate House Tower. Yeah. And if that weren't enough, the famous brewing company, Arthur Guinness, celebrated its 100th anniversary recently, and they projected a giant pint of Guinness on the tower. <laughs> The University of London itself dates back to 1836, when it was invented really as the antidote to Oxford and Cambridge, which were totally male, and you had not only male, you had to be a practicing Anglican. So we broke, we were the first access university. We broke the barriers of gender and religion. And in 1858, under Queen Victoria, uh, something very strange, I still don't understand uh, how it happened. We were granted a special charter which enabled us to award degrees, University of London degrees, to people who did not necessarily come to London to study. So we were not only the first access university, we were the first distance learning uh, university. And uh, originally, uh, outside of Oxford and Cambridge in England, we, we were the, the founding university, um, and there weren't universities in English cities like Exeter and Leicester and, and Manchester and Sheffield and so on. And to study for a degree in England, back then in the second half of the 19th century, you went to a local college and studied for the external University of London degree. And those centres for the external London system were, grew eventually into that new generation of universities, so universities of Sheffield and Nottingham, etc., grew out of that relationship originally with the University of London. Uh, today, the university is a federation of 17 of the uh, most powerful research multi-faculty universities and a number of specialist uh, institutions. There are around about 120,000 students studying in London at our constituent colleges and institutes. And there are over 54,000 students around the world studying now the external system, the international programs. So it's a pretty big academic enterprise in general. In particular, here in Senate House, uh, we have the Senate House Library, which serves the Federation. And associated with our School of Advanced Study, uh, we have a number of institutes, research institutes, facilitation institutes in the humanities, many of whom also have very spectacular libraries. So you are sitting under the tower of uh, a huge number of uh, books and artifacts which are used for research facilitation. In addition to the purely academic, um, the Central University provides many services to the constituent colleges in terms of student support, career services, accommodation services, uh, and so on. So welcome again to the Senate House. If you have any time in your crowded program, 
uh, to venture outside into this area of London, Bloomsbury, uh, you will find within short walking distance the British Library, the British Museum, many of our constituent colleges, and the newly opened uh, Crick Institute for Biomedical Sciences, the State of the Art uh, Institute. And perhaps more relevant to today, within a month or so, we'll see the inauguration of the Alan Turing Institute, which will be based in the British Library site, uh, which is our response nationally to the challenge of big data. So once again, a very warm welcome from me. Have a productive conference. Paul Aries from the University College London will give the second welcome. Uh, Paul is the chair of the local organizing committee. He is also a uh, Libe post uh, uh, president and current uh, advisor to the board. So uh, we know, know him very, very well and he has provided Libe uh, Excellent, so magnificent services. So, Paul, please, the, the no floor is yours. <laughs> I feel a bit under a bit of pressure now. <laughs> so, Christina, thank you very much for your uh, kind words as Lieber President. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the local organising committee here in London, can I welcome you here to uh, London in 2015 for the 44th. Uh, Lieber uh, annual uh, conference. Uh, as you see from the number of people in the hall and people in the uh, breakout rooms and workshops uh, today and yesterday, this is the biggest conference in terms of numbers that Lieber has ever held. We, we have uh, 480 registered uh, uh, members attending during the three days and we had so many uh, applications. We had to close the registration uh, about four weeks before the conference started because the physical, it's a fantastic, as Sir Adrian has said, it's a fantastic physical location, but even Beverage Hall couldn't contain the numbers who wanted to come here uh, to listen to the topics that are being debated during this week on this very innovative theme of uh, open science. So uh, we feel the weight of responsibility here in London, in the local organising committee, to give you the best conference you've had in your 44 years uh, as, uh, during which Lever has uh, been in existence. Uh, there are four bodies who are closely involved with the local organising committee, and it is my privilege and pleasure to speak on their behalf today. You will meet and hear other members of the local organising committee at various stages during the next three days. But four bodies are Senate House, uh, of which Sir Adrian has talked so eloquently, uh, my own institution of uh, UCL, University College London, which is the oldest um, college in the Federal University, founded in uh, 1826, and so the third oldest uh, university in uh, England after Oxford and uh, Cambridge, uh, the London School of Economics and uh, Imperial College. And all these institutions have banded together to put on the organization for the uh, event in the next uh, three days. So Sir Adrian talked about the wealth of library resources here in Senate House and in one or two well-known libraries close by in the British Museum, in the British Library, and in the two new institutes that are being founded, uh, the, uh, the Alan Turing Institute and the Crick uh, Institute. In fact, if you walk around Bloomsbury, in, in this square mile, there are probably more libraries uh, than in any other city anywhere in the world. That means for researchers, for students, for those who want to engage with new activities uh, academically and intellectually, London is a magnet for higher education. And the Federal University prides itself on being a magnet to attract researchers both to work here in, in, in the colleges and the academic bodies, but also as visitors, so we can share our knowledge with the rest of the world, because there is such a most fantastic concentration of research activity in this square mile in uh, Bloomsbury. 
Uh, and finally, that then makes the program, the theme for uh, this week, Open Science, particularly uh, relevant. London, uh, as Sir Adrian has said, uh, has offered examination programs to the whole of the world. The University of London was the University of Empire when Britain had an empire. Now we don't have an empire, thank goodness, we're a little bit more civilised than that, but we do, believe in, we do believe in open science, in sharing the results of our research, uh, and, and uh, getting access to the results of other people's research from around the world. That's what the open science uh, agenda can deliver. That's why it's the theme of uh, the conference this week. And that's why London is particularly pleased to be hosting this conference on this theme in Bloomsbury uh, in the next few days. So on behalf of the local organising committee, welcome to London, and I hope you enjoy your time with us. welcome to London, London University and the Senate, Senate House. It is always a pleasure to visit London, its museums and galleries and cultural life, and of course to meet colleagues here. UK is known for its world-class research and the magnificent network of universities. And the magnificent net network of universities in London has a central role in, in this. The Federal University, which comprises of 17 universities, as we just, just heard, uh, is the biggest university in the UK. Uh, you, you mentioned some, some parts of, of the history of, of the University of London and also the Senate House. I also studied a bit uh, what kind of well-known citizens have, have studied here. And I, I found names such as Mahatma Gandhi, John F. Kennedy and also Elton John, so different <laughs> characters in, in our research uh, and cultural life. Senate House offers a splendid environment for the conference with close to 500 delegates and many parallel e events during the week. So we are very happy, happy to be here. Thank you for welcoming us. Dr. Paul, e Paul Ayres, dear Paul, thank you for your kind welcome and for all your support you have given to make this event happen. You have acted as the chair of the local organizing committee and we all know that it is not an easy task to, to coordinate such a big event. The conference is a joint effort of four libraries as we heard in, in Paul's uh, welcome the Senate House Library, Imperial College Library, London School of Economics, and the University of London uh, Library. On behalf of LIBA members, I want to thank all the organizers uh, for making this conference possible. And now our next speaker will be the Vice President of, of LIBA, Jeanette Frey, to, to keep the Conference Programme Committee report. Thanks, uh, Christina. Um, wow, it's a great pleasure to see you all here in London. So many sympathetic uh, faces. Um, as the chair of the LIBER Conference uh, Programme Committee, I would like uh, to welcome you here at this uh, 2015 LIBER Annual uh, Conference. I'm sure the Conference Programme Committee members, as we all are now eager to hear the keynotes and the selected presentations. At this place, I would like to thank all the 21 uh, members of the present LIBER Conference Programme Committee for their work all over the year. Uh, the committee has, um, in, we have people from all over Europe, uh, I'd say the composition uh, of the present com uh, program committee is well balanced. Last year we didn't ask for new members for the conference program committee. For next year uh, we would like to integrate two or three new colleagues. So if you are interested in this, um, participating in this team, uh, please let me know or let uh, know to Susan Riley, our director executive, here um, about your interest. 
I would be really pleased to have uh, some new people coming in. Um, our work is mainly about reviewing the papers and posters coming in for the conference. Uh, it's a bit of work, I say, but it's also very interesting to read about all the projects that colleagues are working on all over Europe. Lieber selects the paper for the conference uh, through blind review. Three or four members of the conference program committee uh, will review every proposed paper. And the 33 papers that score best are selected uh, for presentation at the conference. The rejection rate is about 70% which is, I may say, normal for this kind of uh, conference we are organizing. Uh, so, uh, but if you presented a paper and it wasn't selected, please don't be despair. So just uh, stick to it and um, uh, take care of the quality of the abstract. We may realize that the abstract is what we can read as uh, reviewers uh, when you propose a paper. This year we had 90 papers come in, from which uh, 33 were selected for presentation at uh, this conference. Uh, we had uh, 32 proposals for poster that came in, from which 20 were selected, and you will be able to see them um, in the main hall and hear about them in the poster uh, section. I'm very happy to see you all here in London, and again, if you are eager to participate in the Liber Conference uh, Program Committee, I'd be really happy uh, you to, to join. <coughs> Meanwhile, enjoy the presentations and have a great time in London. <laughs> It's time to formally open the meeting of participants. And I'm asking Dr. Anne Matheson, the Secretary General of LIBE, to, to come to the podium. Good afternoon, uh, colleagues. There's one vacancy on the executive board this year. There are three nominations for the vacancy. Doctors Anja Smit of Trecht University Library, the Netherlands, proposed by Dr. Janet Wilkinson, University of Manchester, and director of the John Rylands Library, UK. Mr. Thorsten Meyer, ZBV, German National Library of Economics in Kiel, Germany, proposed by Professor Klaus Tochtermann uh, from the same um, university. And the third nomination is Ms. Kate Robinson, University of Bath Library, proposed by Dr. Jessica Gardner, University of Bristol Library. There will be a closed ballot uh, for this vacancy. Uh, Libra participants entitled to vote have received their voting papers and their voting cards at the Liber desk at conference registration. If you haven't already received your voting papers, please do collect them from the Liber desk at any time uh, today. Uh, they, they will be there waiting for you. And everyone, please return your completed voting papers to the Liber desk at the latest by nine o'clock tomorrow morning, 25th June. There will be three tellers for the ballot count proposed by Libra participants. And the proposals are Sven Larsen, Staatsbibliotheket Aarhus, Denmark, Anna Rovira, Biblioteca de Catalunya, Spain, and Ulrich Niederer, Lucerne University Library, Switzerland. May we please appoint them as tellers for the ballot count? Thank you very much indeed uh, for that. There are also three reappointments to the Liber Executive Board to be made at the meeting of participants tomorrow. They are Mr. Luis Anglada, CSUC, Catalonia, Spain, 
Dr. Claudia Fabian, Barsche Staatsbibliothek Munich, Germany, and Mr. Anders Wilks, National Library of Latvia. And finally, Libra participants, please remember to bring your voting card to the meeting of participants tomorrow at, in the Beverage Hall here from 15.30 to 16.30. Thank you very much.